Big and trick trivia time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's Big and trick trivia time. And we'll feel it all right. Okay. All right, welcome. Happy Thursday, everybody. My name is Ali with Bag of Tricks Entertainment. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We are going to be playing some trivia here in just a few minutes. I'm going to tell you all about the reason we're here and how we play the game and what's on the line in just a couple minutes. Before I do any of that, I want to let you know why we're here tonight. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that in a second. Before we do that, I want to remind you that in addition to being here on YouTube, you also want to join our online game system. So this is separate from YouTube. Here on YouTube, you're going to hear and see me ask the questions. But in order to actually participate in tonight's game and have your answers scored and have a shot at winning our top prize, you do need to join the online game system. It's super easy. You can open up any internet browser and go to online.bagoftricks.com and enter in the code you see at the bottom of the screen, 111920A. That is just today's date, 11-19-20-A. If you followed a link from Facebook or a link that was emailed out to you, you won't have to put in that code. It'll bring you automatically to the um, sign-in screen. Uh, however you get there, once you're at the sign-in screen, you're gonna see, whoa, way too many pieces of information. Let me fix this, I apologize. I don't know why it's capturing all this information. You don't have to give me all that. I'll turn this off, I'll turn that off. I apologize, everybody, give me one second. There we go, this is what it should look like. Uh, it should just be asking for these three pieces of information. This is all we need for the game tonight. The first is your name. That could be your personal name or a nickname or a team name. Whatever you put in the first blank, it's what's going to show up on the rankings board whenever we look at that throughout the night. Secondly, you do want to put in your email address. So this is one we do need because if you happen to be the winner tonight, we're going to have to contact you to get that prize out to you. I'll tell you what that is here in just a couple minutes. And then lastly, just the state you're playing from. That is just for fun. Uh, we like to take a look and see where everybody is joining us from. Since we have this new online option, uh, you don't have to be local to be playing. So once you've put those three pieces of information in and you see this screen, it says uh, the game will begin shortly. That's good. That's all you need to do. That means you're all set. Uh, the only thing that needs to happen is now on my end, and that is starting the game, which I will do here in just a couple minutes. Before I actually start the game, I want to go over how it's played and, again, why we are here tonight. So obviously we're here to have some fun tonight, but we're also raising funds for a fantastic cause. So thank you to the individuals at ComEd who have graciously sponsored tonight's event. So uh, in lieu of what I understand is a yearly volunteer event um, due to what's going on with COVID and, and the restrictions that we have, um, ComEd is helping us tonight by sponsoring the event to raise funds for DuPage pads. Um, you do not have to pay to participate in tonight's event, but if you would like to, we are asking for donations. That goes directly to DuPage Pads, which I'm going to tell you all about. There's a link in the description of this video. Um, you don't go through us. You click on that. It takes you directly to their website, and you can donate directly. Um, and speaking of ComEd, Exelon, if you're out there and you're playing and you're an employee or you're with ComEd, Exelon, if you donate $25 or more, that will be matched by your company. Um, so you probably know more about that even than I do, but I just wanted to remind you that a donation of $25 or more to DuPage Pads uh, from anybody at Com uh, ComEd Exelon is matched by the company. Uh, so it goes even further tonight. So we know why we're here, but who is DuPage Pads? What is DuPage Pads? Um, so we've done an event with DuPage Pads in the past, and I can't wait to tell you more about them right now. DuPage Pads is so much more than just a pad on the floor. Recognizing 35 years of service, DuPage Pads is the largest provider of services to those who are homeless in DuPage County. DuPage Pads' solution to ending homelessness is housing coupled with support services and employment to restore hope and transform lives. DuPage Pads is the solution to end homelessness because when someone believes in you, 
everything can change. So this is who you're supporting by donating to DuPage Pads tonight. Obviously, they've been doing this for a long time, 35 years, but they've seen extreme uh, you know, challenges and extreme success with the last seven, eight, nine, how many months is it now since we've really been uh, struck with COVID? Uh, when COVID-19 began to change the daily lives, so did the work to end homelessness in DuPage County. Um, since then, so since COVID um, started changing how things work, from March till October 31st of this year, through DuPage Pads, they've provided 23,284 nights of shelter to clients in hotels. Uh, to those people, they've then provided 69,852 meals. They have placed a unique 247 individuals into housing. Uh, and this is an incredible number. Total households exited hotel to stable housing. So individuals who left temporary housing to more stable housing through DuPage Pads, 56 households. And this is since March. This is since um, COVID-19 really changed the way that things are happening. So this is who you're supporting by donating tonight. Um, and I can't thank you enough just for being here. Um, even if you're not able financially to donate, as I'm sure many of us are not, uh, just spreading the word, letting your friends know, you know, here's a good um, organization to donate if they are in a position to donate um, and just getting awareness out there about what they're doing at DuPage Pads. So with that said, I am going to tell you a little bit more about how the game works here in just one second. But I do want to remind you one more time that you won't be playing here on YouTube. You're going to be listening on YouTube. But in order to actually participate, you need to join the online game here. Uh, let me turn. I just looked at the chat. I see some people are having issues. Give me one second. Uh, I'm just going to turn that off. Let's turn this off. Uh, let's try this. Uh, Christiane, if you refresh and you sign back in again now, um, it should be able to work. I apologize. Uh, they've been having issues with this system online. Um, so I hope you guys can appreciate as well. Uh, we are not <laughs> at our roots an online trivia company. This has started for us as well back in March. So we are happy that uh, in lieu of being able to do these trivia nights in person, as I would much prefer, and I'm sure you would love to be out at a bar playing trivia with us right now, I'm happy that we have this opportunity to host online and raise funds for these organizations. Um, so as I mentioned, we are going to play this game. We do have a prize on the line. We have a $50 gift card to Alter Brewing Company in Downers Grove. Delicious beer. Uh, if you've never been, it's a great place to check out. I know they're doing curbside. They, do, they did for a while some limited delivery if you were in the area. So check them out. And if you win tonight's game, you'll have even more of a reason to check them out because we have a $50 gift card on the line. So how do you win that $50 gift card? If you are the individual at the end of this game with the most points, You've won. It's that simple. Uh, but how do you earn those points? Tonight's game is general knowledge trivia. So these questions are about anything and everything. Some of them will be simple. Some of them will be very tough. But they are all worth 150 points towards your team's total based on if you're correct and how quickly you answer. So how that works, I will ask you a question. You'll see it here on the screen. You'll also see it on your own device, whether that's your phone or your computer, and that's where you wanna be looking. Uh, once I start the timer, you'll see four options appear on the screen. It's always A, B, C, and D, and one of them is always the correct answer. So all you have to do as a participant is choose either A, B, C, or D, and if you're correct, you earn upwards of 150 points, but that is based on how quickly you answer. So if you are correct, you'll earn points. It starts at 150 and as the timer goes down, so does the point value for the question. So it pays not only to be correct, but also to be quick when you're answering. However, you do wanna be careful because if you click the wrong answer, you can't change it. If you hit A, A is gonna be your answer for the rest of, the, uh, for the rest of that question, not the rest of the evening. Uh, if you hit A, that is locked in as your question for, uh, that answer for that question. Excuse me, I have a sneeze. Here's Taco. He'll be with us 
until he gets unruly. This is our resident de facto mascot here. Uh, my sneeze disappeared, so I'm back. Um, if you answer A, you can't switch it to B, C, D, etc. However, you do want to take a guess if you're not sure because if you're wrong, you don't lose any points. And I'm only telling you that because if you come to a question and you have absolutely no idea, don't leave it blank. At least take a guess. It's not going to hurt you if you're wrong. Um, so let's see if everybody is working now. Everybody's in. Okay, cool. So let me say hello. Hey, Jess, John J. Catherine Stapleton. Thanks for being here. Jen Sterna. Hello, Jess Angelica. Mr. Rice Krispie. Lindsay Davis. Welcome, welcome. So my friends, if you're new to playing trivia, there is a live chat on the side or underneath the video, depending on if you're on your computer or your phone. Feel free to chat along with us as we play this game. Uh, thank you, Chad. Thank you, Chad. Good to see you. All right, here we go. Um, we are going to get this game started. And just in case you're still looking at the screen saying, how does this work? The very first question is a practice question. And what that means is that it will look just like the rest of the questions will tonight, but it's not going to be worth any points. This one is just for fun. This is just so that if this is your first time playing, you can see how the system works and you can be on the same level playing field as everybody else. So with that said, here we go. I'm going to get this game started. You can see the question on your screen right now. What is the name of your host today? That's me. But let's see if you remember what my name is. Again, this one's not worth any points. As you can see, there are no answers on the screen yet because I haven't started the timer. So you're always going to have an opportunity to see the question before the timer starts. What is the name of your host today? That's me. Is my name Joey, Ross, Chandler, or Ali? What is the name of your host this evening? Take a guess. You don't have to be correct here. You're just learning the system, and this is not worth any points. So don't worry. Yeah, I'm not seeing EJV in the chat. Are those new curtains? Me? No, same curtains. I assume you're talking to me. I don't know who else curtains you'd be seeing. No, same curtains. Uh, I think they look different. I don't know why. Hey, Ed. Thanks for all your help getting this set up. All right, everybody's in. So here's what it looks like after you've answered. Two people said Joey, one person said Ross, three people said Chandler, and nine people said Ali. If this was worth points and you had answered Ali, you would be earning points, but this wasn't worth anything. This was just for fun. But from this point on, my friends, every single question is worth, as I mentioned, up to 150 points. Some of these are simple. Some of these are tough, uh, but you don't lose points if you're wrong. So here we go. Question number two uh this is actually a com ed specific question a com ed specific question uh and if you're looking at the gif here this is how i like to believe that com ed was born uh through improved marketing and increased demand for electric light lighting commonwealth edison was born created in what year what year did commonwealth edison as a company come to be was it 1845 1929 1952 or 1907. Yeah, try all you want. You can't convince me that this gift is not how this company was born. All right, everybody's in. So one person said 1845, four people said 1929, two people said 1952, 10 people said 1907, and 10 people were correct. Congratulations, you got points if you put that one. And again, you didn't lose points if you put A, B, or C. Um, you just only earned points if you answered D here. Question number three. The song Venus by Dutch rock band Shocking Blue was covered very successfully in the 80s by which all-girl band? Which band covered the song Venus in the 1980s? The Spice Girls, the Bangles, Bananarama, or the Go-Go's? Oh, good stretch. Good stretch. Okay, let's lay down. There you go. Lay down. All right, everybody is 
in. Nobody said the Spice Girls. That's good. They weren't around. Four people said the Bangles. One person said the Go-Go's. Twelve people said uh, the name that is correct and also very, very fun to say, Bananarama. Bananarama is correct. C, got your points on this one. Uh, moving on, question number four. Which Greek god is usually associated with the sea? Which of the following Greek gods would be known as the god of the sea? Is it Poseidon, Apollo, Hermes, or Aquarius? But he's not content on his bed, I guess. Uh, everybody's in and every single person got this. That is a social great job, everybody. Cheers, congratulations, Poseidon. Correct answer, Neptune in the Roman mythology. Uh, Kelly Slater in real life. Number five, mostly located in Washington, D.C. What group of museums is known as the nation's attic, holding over 150 million items in its buildings zoos and landmarks is it smithsonian rockefeller guggenheim or carnegie carnegie i agree lindsay i would love to go here when i can go places again All right, I think we're gonna have another perfect answered question. And yes, officially we do. 17 of you correctly said the Smithsonian. Correct answer here, Smithsonian. Great job, every single one of you. So for the first time, we're gonna take a look at the standings. We'll put them up on the screen. If you're in first, second, or third, it's gonna stay at the top. Uh, in first, 306, 232, exclamation point. In second, the Angelicas, Artie and Winnie. In third, Lindsay and everybody else. You can see where you're at here on the screen. It's going to rotate through. Uh, we'll look at it here. We'll go through these rankings just about every five questions. Just about every five questions. All right, here we go. Question number six. Who was the oldest member of the Beatles? So again, if you're not sure, you don't lose points if you're wrong. Who was the oldest member of the Beatles? Was it Ringo, George, Paul, or John? Beating the guy who left. Thanks, looking good. <laughs> uh, everybody's in. Everybody's in. Let's take a look how we answered. Okay, a little bit all over the place here. Five people said Ringo. Two people said Paul. Nine people said George. One person said John. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's the sneeze I've been waiting on for about 11 minutes. Uh, the correct answer here is actually pretty close, um, although not many of you put the person who is second the correct answer is ringo ringo star born july 7th 1940 john lennon was born a mere four months later in october uh of 1940 and then paul mccartney was two years later 1942 george harrison which uh the majority of you thought is the oldest was actually the youngest february 25th 1943 i think he was just an old soul Uh, does it count if they're dead? Uh, y yeah, we were still talking. Either way, Ringo's still alive, so he would still, no matter how you look at it, he wins this. Uh, question number seven. Uh, superheroes are everywhere. Is a children's book written by which of these women? Superheroes are everywhere. Is a children's book written by which of these women? Is it Michelle Obama, 
Jill Biden, Kamala Harris, or Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Kamala, I apologize. Ringo is still alive. Yes, yes, yes. He was touring Ringo's all-star band with Colin Hay in it. <sighs> Looking forward to that if it happens again. Speaking of superheroes, how about my wife? Somebody's earning brownie points out there, Jen's husband, Sterna. Uh, you guys, yeah, once again, all over the place. Six people said Michelle Obama. Five people said Jill Biden. Five people said uh, Kamala Harris. And one person said Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The correct answer is our incoming vice president, Kamala Harris. Superheroes are everywhere. Great job. Five of you got points for that. Question number eight. What actress from films like Home Alone and Beetlejuice provided the voice, the talking voice, of Sally in the film The Nightmare Before Christmas? Was it Catherine O'Hara, Leah Thompson, Gina Davis, or Winona Ryder? All right, everybody is in. Let's take a look. Two people each said Gina Davis and Winona Ryder. 13 people said Catherine O'Hara. The correct answer was Catherine O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara now uh, getting a lot of praise for Schitt's Creek as well. Uh, but Home Alone, Beetlejuice, and The Nightmare Before Christmas. Also, excuse me, in her filmography. All right, number nine. The word disco is derived from a word that means underground nightclub in what language? The word disco is derived from another word that means underground nightclub in what language? Is it German, Italian, French, or Spanish? Two people said German, five people said Italian, four people said Spanish, six people said French. This again was pretty close. Uh, we were looking at discotheque, French. This came from the French, discotheque. All right, uh, let's go with question number 10 and then we'll look at the standings again. Uh, we're talking about the human body. What is the largest solid organ in the average adult human? average adult human which of these solid organs is the largest is it the heart the liver the brain or the stomach disco fries poutine french canadians <laughs> as long as it gets you there <laughs> i like that train of thought Everybody's in. Just go fries with onions. All right, everybody's in. Three people said the brain, two people said the stomach, 12 people said the liver, and that is the correct answer. The liver, on average, the largest solid organ in the average adult human. Great job. See if anything's changed. Looking at first, second, penis cuddling in first, 306, 232 in second, Lindsay in third. The Angelica's already in Winnie in fourth. Matt Vaughn in fifth. Let's get quizzical. C P E D. C P E D. Uh, C P E D. Ow. Werewolves in lockdown. Rockefeller the Owl. Sambuca and Salsa. What's up? Team name. Team name in 11th. It's over. Bananakin in 12th. A hole numero uno in 13th. Cat Stapleton in 14th. Jen's husband, Sterna, in 15th. Hot Dog Time Machine in 16th. Gambit in 17th. And EJ currently in 18th. All right, here we go. Question number 11. What 19, or sorry, uh, what 1996 Rebecca Wells novel 
begins with this line. For Siddeley Walker, the need to understand has passed, at least for the moment. All that was left was love and wonder. What 1996 novel opens up with that line? Is it The Secret History, The Time Traveler's Wife, Eat, Pray, Love, or Divine Sis Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood? Disco fries are similar to poutine, but they're New Jersey thing. That's good. Oh, somebody finally settled in. Another long, hard day of doing nothing, Taco. All right, everybody's in. Nobody said secret history. Four people said time traveler's wife. Six people said eat, pray, love. Seven people said the divine secrets of the Yah Yah sisterhood. And that is the correct answer. Divine secrets of the Yah Yah sisterhood. Great job. Uh, question number 12. What was the name of William Shakespeare's wife? It's a real life history question. What was the name of William Shakespeare's wife? Was it Katharina Minola, Anne Boleyn, Anne Hathaway, or Elizabeth Tudor? Oh, hello. Let's see, everybody's getting in. Oh, sorry. All right, three people said Katharina Minola. Two people said Anne Boleyn. Nobody said Elizabeth Tudor. 13 people said, like the current, Celebrity Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway is the correct answer. Great job. If you put C, you got points for this one. Number 13. What metal anthem served as the title of a Broadway musical about the Sunset Strip hair band heyday? What song title served as also the title of a Broadway musical about the heyday of the Sunset Strip hair bands? Was it nothing but a good time? Turn up the radio. Come on, feel the noise, or rock of ages. <laughs> Love her in the Princess Diaries. Oh, wait. Maybe it's her reincarnated. Hi. I saw this one. Uh... Yes, Chris, I changed it because anytime I put it the way that it's actually spelled, I get 10 people sending me comments. And it's just not worth the hassle. I'd rather get... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, family game. Yep, 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 exactly. Uh, everybody's in. Five people said, come on, feel the noise. 13 people said, rock of ages. Correct answer is rock of ages. I did uh, actually see this uh, in Chicago. I think when Constantine from American Idol was rocking and rolling in. All right, number 14. In 1950, <laughs> 55, in 1995, Cal Ripken Jr. broke which player's record for consecutive games played? In 1995, Cal Ripken Jr. Started, uh, took over the record for the most consecutive games played from which other player? Was it Roberto Clemente, Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, or Frank Robinson? All right, everybody is in. Let's take a look at what we thought. I don't know how many 
baseball stories we have out there. Five people said Roberto Clemente. Two people each said Mickey Mantle and Frank Robinson. Nine of you correctly said Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig. <laughs> E-sports. <laughs> uh, Lou Gehrig, the correct answer here. Question 15. Uh, the eponymous... Eponymous? Oh, God, I always forget how to say that word. Museo Picasso in Barcelona, Spain, houses more than 4,000 works by the famous painter. We are talking about a museum all about Picasso in Barcelona. What art style did he help pioneer? What art style was Pablo Picasso famous for? Was it Surrealism, Impressionism, Cubism, or Dadaism? I love this GIF with this question. Anytime I do a question about Picasso, because Gina pointed out one time that it's Pablo Pig Casso in this GIF. And I just, I'll never get over that. Pablo Pig Casso. Eponymous. Really? Eponymous? Eponymous. Sure. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Four people said surrealism. Five people said impressionism. Nine people said cubism. Nobody said dadaism. Uh, the correct answer was cubism. Good job. The majority of you got that right. Uh, we are going to take a look at the standings. Yeah, Chris, I was taking that all with a grain of salt, but I thought maybe you were being serious for once. Uh, the correct answer is cubism. Nine of you got it. So we'll take a look at the standings because this is question 15. Uh, in first, puppies cuddling. In second, Lindsay. In third, the Angelica's uh, Artie and Winnie. In fourth, 306 to 232. Matt Vaughn in fifth. Let's get quizzical in sixth. Uh, ooh, werewolves in lockdown in seventh. Sambuca and Salsa in eighth. Team name in ninth. And Ruckerfeller the Owl in tenth. Everybody else, take a look, see where you're at. Uh, we're going to continue this train right on a chug into question number 16. Every question tonight is multiple choice, so if you know how this is working now, you are set. We have uh, still about 20 questions left, so we're going to rock and roll. Lots of points out there. Uh, take the, the standings that you see with a grain of salt. This is not the final standings by any means. Things could change, or this could be the final standings if you guys keep doing as well as you're doing right now. Question 16. Three of these films were directed by Steven Spielberg. Which one of them was not? Three of these four films was directed by Steven Spielberg. Which of these was not directed by Steven Spielberg? The Color Purple, The Adventures of Tintin, Poltergeist, or Amistad? Everybody's in, yeah, all, up in the air here. Uh, let's see. Four people said The Color Purple. Four people said The Adventures of Tintin. Six people said Amistad. Three people said Poltergeist. The correct answer, surprisingly, is Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Uh, I think this is a tricky one. I think maybe he was a producer. Uh... It was written by Steven Spielberg. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I didn't mean for that to be so tricky. These always are tricky. Um, it was directed by Toby Hooper, uh, written by Steven Spielberg. He did not direct it. So this one was a little trickier than I intended. I apologize. But three of you did get it right. Uh, question number 17. Andy Warhol, Kurt Vonnegut, and the 1994 Nobel Prize in Economics winner John Forbes Nash all attended what private university in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? Is it Duquesne University, Carlo University, Carnegie Mellon University, or Robert Morris University? I write these questions and I type in things and I realize I don't know how to say them when I look at them. Uh, 
But just because I don't know how to say something doesn't mean that it's wrong, my friends. Don't ever let that lead you astray. Might be wrong, might be right. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, everybody's in. Yeah, nobody was led astray here. Uh, the correct answer was Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon University. Good job. 15 of you got that right. Question number 18. In which Disney film of the four that will be listed would you find the diamond-obsessed villain, Madame Medusa? Which Disney film would you find a villain named Madame Medusa? Is it the, the Three Caballeros, the Princess and the Frog, the Rescuers, or the Black Cauldron? Everybody is in officially. Let's take a look. Let's see what you said. One person said the three caballeros. Three people said the princess and the frog. Two said the black cauldron. And 11 people, as Jess Angelica said, finally, my rescuer's obsession pays off. It was the rescuers. The rescuers. Good job. 11 of you got that. Question number 19. Steinlager. Steinlager. Uh, is the name of the beer. It's a lager style, lager style beer brewed in what country? What country gives us Stein Lager? Is it New Zealand, the Netherlands, Singapore, or Australia? Still holding out for some rescuers down under. Yeah, we'll get there. Let's see, nine people said the Netherlands, three people said Australia, five people said New Zealand, one person said Singapore. The correct answer is New Zealand. New Zealand gives us Steinlager. I haven't had it personally. Steinlager. Question 20. What gemstone, popular in Native American art, gets its name from the European country that first imported it from the mines of Persia? So which of the following gemstones is named based on the fact uh, that it was imported to a European country from Persia? Which of these is it? Is it turquoise, iolite, alexandrite, or emerald? Gobble, gobble. Yes, Ed. Yes, yes, yes. The correct answer uh, is, in fact, turquoise, which uh, means Turkish stone. We're talking about Turkey that imported it from the mines of Persia, uh, and it therefore was called turquoise, Turkish stone. Good job. That's question 20. Here are the standings now. Puppies cuddling still in first, but by only four points, four single points, over 306 to 232. Lindsay in third. Uh, let's see, who's in fourth? Who's on first? The Angelica's already in winning in fourth. Let's get quizzical in fifth. Everybody else, take a look, see where you're at. As we move on, we still have a bunch of questions left. So, here we go. Question 21. It's coming up. <laughs> here it is. Uh, who is the current CEO of ComEd? We started with a ComEd question. We have one more right now in the middle of the game. Who is the current CEO of ComEd? Is it Larry Page, Meg Whitman, Jack Dorsey, or Joseph Dominguez?
So quick reminder, we are here having fun. We were also here to raise money for DuPage pads this evening. So if you are able to and you feel so compelled, there is a link in the description of this video directly below on your computer or uh, I still think below this video on your phone. If you click on that, it'll take you directly to the DuPage pad site. You donate directly to them. You don't go through us. Um, and if you happen to be with Commonwealth Edison and you donate $25 or more, the company will match that. Um, so we can make these donations go a lot further tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for donating. Uh, thank you to Ed and ComEd for sponsoring tonight's event. And uh, to everybody, Carrie, Chad, everybody at Page Pads for everything you do and allowing us to help you out with these online events. We really appreciate it. So one of you each said Larry Page and Meg Whitman. Five people said Jack Dorsey. I believe that's the CEO of Twitter. The correct answer is Joseph Dominguez. Joseph Dominguez. It is not EJV the fourth. Yeah, surprise, surprise. What the heck? Uh, good job. Ten of you got that right. Question number 22. Three of the following animated films are by the Disney Film Studios. Which one of these was not made by Disney? Three of these films were made by Disney. Which one was not? The Emperor's New Groove, The Black Cauldron, Shrek, or Sleeping Beauty? Which one of these films was not made by Disney Studios? llama face Lindsay I've been waiting for this question good uh, two people said the black cauldron one person said sleeping beauty 15 people said correctly Shrek Shrek is a DreamWorks pictures film uh, I would say arguably the largest competitor to Pixar uh, and then Disney animation studios or Disney 3d whatever they call themselves uh, that do the films that you're surprised aren't Pixar like big hero 6 uh, so good job Shrek, the correct answer. Question number 23. Which of the following four performers has never had a Las Vegas residency? <laughs> four options. Three of them have done a residency in Vegas at some point. One of them has not. Who has never done a Las Vegas residency? Elton John, Wayne Newton, Paul McCartney, or Elvis Presley? <laughs> Mrs. Rice Cream. John requires me to say maximum ogre drive. <laughs> oh, there's so many fantastic Shrek memes and gifts. Never ending, honestly. All right, let's take a look at what you said. Three people said Elvis Presley. I think he was pretty famously uh, associated with Vegas. Three people said Elton John. He's actually done two Vegas residencies. The most recent ran from 2011 to 2018, The Million Dollar Piano. The correct answer is Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney never done a Las Vegas residency. Uh, so good job. 12 of you got that. Majority of you still got that one, right? Question number 24. In which Texas city... Would you find the famous Alamo Mission? Where would you find the Alamo and its adjoining basement? Is it San Antonio, Fort Worth, Amarillo, or El Paso? Clap, 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 clap. Deep in the heart of oh, Texas. Is the basement this way? There's no basement at the Alamo. Oh, that was good. Clap emojis. That was smart, Jess. All right, everybody's in. Two people said El Paso. Delicious salsa, but not the correct answer here. That is San Antonio. San Antonio, the Alamo mission. All right, question 25. Thanksgiving dates back to 1621. When the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag Indians gathered for a harvest celebration in what early colony? Uh, which colony did the first Thanksgiving supposedly take place back in 1621? Chesapeake Bay, Plymouth, St. Augustine, or Jamestown?
All right, everybody's in. Three people said Jamestown. Fifteen people said Plymouth. What great luck. We took off from Plymouth, and we landed in Plymouth. How great. The correct answer is Plymouth. Plymouth. Great job. Most of you got that. Fifteen people. Here's an update at the standings. 306, 232 in first. Puppies cuddling in second. Still very close. The Angelica's already in. Winnie in third. Everybody else, take a look. See where you're at. Here we go. Continuing on. Question 26. Which Stephen King novel was the first of his novels to be adapted into a film? Which Stephen King novel was the first of his to be adapted into a film? Was it Christine, Cujo, The Shining, or Carrie? Everybody is in. Let's see how we answered. All right, we got guesses at all of these. Two people said Christine. Three people said Cujo. Six people said The Shining. Seven people said Carrie. The first novel that was adapted into a film was also his first published novel, Carrie, 1974. I believe the movie was just a couple years later, 1976. Yeah, just two years later smash it all right question 27 what american author created the characters butterworth staveley and puddinhead wilson in addition to tom canty and becky thatcher which american author gave us all of these listed characters was it james fenimore cooper nathaniel hawthorne mark twain or henry james they're all gonna laugh at you yes I actually just read it. I'm a very big Stephen King fan. I'm on my way to read all of his books. And I think I'm almost halfway there. And I just read Carrie for the first time. And I enjoyed it. Thanks, past trivia. Yeah, that's the point of trivia. Learn it, but you got to remember it. One person each said Cooper and Hawthorne, but 16 of you correctly said Mark Twain. Mark Twain. He's done a lot. And he invented these characters. Question 28. What 1983 Pulitzer Prize winner ends? So earlier we did a book that starts with a line. Now we're doing a book that ends with this line. But I don't think us feel old at all. And us so happy. Matter of fact, I think this the youngest us ever felt. This is Matilda, the color purple. The Joy Luck Club or The Handmaid's Tale? in one person said matilda and the handmaid's tale each 16 people correctly said the color purple uh, i believe the film which we now know was directed by steven spielberg uh holds a record for being nominated i think it was like 14 academy awards and it won none of them uh let's see two four eight ten at least ten yeah uh 11 i apologize 11 nominations for academy awards and it didn't win a single one uh it's a little bit of history there uh, but this was about the book so good job number 29 stankonia and speaker box slash the love below were huge albums in the 2000s for which hip-hop duo which hip-hop duo gave us stankonia and speaker box slash the love below d12 n-e-r-d 
Gnarls Barkley or Outcast? Everybody is in. Let's take a look. Yeah, you guys knew this. One person each said any RD, Niles Barkley. 16 people said Outcast. Hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. Yes, fantastic albums. Uh, and both members have gone on to great careers since then, too. Uh, number 30. In Greek mythology, once again, who fell from the sky? After flying too, co too close to the sun. Who flew too close to the sun and fell out of the sky? Was it Odysseus, Helios, Icarus, or Daedalus? Oh. Taco. We're live. You can't be doing that. <laughs> All right, everybody's in. Let's take a look. Uh, he's much more presentable. One person said Helios, but s uh, 17 of you correctly said Icarus. He had those wax wings. He flew too close to the sun and fell out of the sky. So great job. That's question 30. We're going to take a look at the standings one final time before we get to the end. Puppies cuddling back up into first. We have 306, 232 still right there in second place. Angelica's, uh, Angelica's already in Winnie right there in third. Everybody, uh, top three, four, five are within a couple hundred points. And there are still six questions left at 150 points apiece, 900 points out there. And again, you're earning points not just for being correct, but also answering quickly. So here we go. Six questions left. Question number 31. When it opened in October of 1888, the, Mos the Washington Monument was the tallest man-made structure in the world. Until what other world landmark opened five months later? Big Ben, Statue of Liberty, Empire State Building, or Eiffel Tower. Washington Monument was the tallest man-made structure in the world in 1888. Until which of these opened five months? months later all right everybody's in one person each said big pen and the statue of liberty three people said the empire state building 13 people correctly said the Eiffel Tower. Good job. Question 32. Which of the following hair bands did not have an all-female lineup? Three of these bands were comprised entirely of uh, women. One of them was not comprised entirely of women. Which of these did not have an all-female lineup? Poison Dollies, Vixen, Brittany Fox, or Precious Metal? Yeah, yeah, there are three all female. Yeah, they're quite a few, Jess. Um, you guys were as closely split as I think you could be. Four people each said Poison Dollies and Britney Fox. Five people each said Vixen and Precious Metal. Uh, this is a very equal distribution. The correct answer, the only one of these that actually was not all female in the band, was Britney Fox. The one that sounds like it is certainly all women. Britney Fox. So great job, four of you got points for that. Question number 33. The most volcanically active moon in our solar system, 
spelled that wrong. Is named Io. Io is a moon of which planet? Mercury, Saturn, Jupiter, or Mars? Take a look. Most of you got this. Four people said Saturn, one person said Mars. The correct answer is Jupiter. Jupiter, 13 of you got that correct. Great job. Question 34. Tom Brady replaced which quarterback and led the New England Patriots to six Super Bowl wins? Who was starting quarterback of the Patriots prior to Tom Brady taking over? Was it Warren Moon, Jim Kelly, Randall Cunningham, or Drew Bledsoe? <laughs> yes. Uh, what is the trigger for a social again? Asking for a friend. Uh, yeah, it goes up and down depending on how much drink I have in my glass. But uh, typically it's around 80% correct uh, gives a social. But uh, some rounds have been known to go down to as low as 50%. <laughs> and some rounds have been, you know, if it's a little tougher, we go up to 90. But we also have reverse socials, which is when nobody gets the question right. That's happened. But there, there's always a reason to social, Chad. You take, you take a social if you want. I'll do it with you. All right, everybody's in. 14 people said Drew Bledsoe. Two people each said Randall Cunningham and Jim Kelly. The correct answer was, in fact, Drew Bledsoe. Good job. Number 35. At 19, which American theme park holds the record for the most roller coasters? Kings Island, Six Flags, Great America. Six Flags, Magic Mountain, or Cedar Point? All right, everybody's in. Take a look. One person said Kings Island. Two people said Great America. Two people said Magic Mountain. 13 people said Cedar Point. You would think so. You would think it's Cedar Point, but you'd be wrong. It is Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is something that they vie after often. Uh, they build additional roller coasters just so they can have this record and get the, uh, the, you know, the, the name that they are the most roller coasters anywhere. And the correct answer here is Six Flags Mag Magic Mountain. All right, one question left. Number 36. In which Florida city did these golden girls live? Was it Miami, Tampa, Orlando, or Fort Lauderdale? Where did the golden girls live on the show of the same name? Yeah, I would, I would hope so. You guys can't be far, right? I don't think you're there. I don't remember exactly where you live, Middleton Lens, but it's close, right? All right, everybody's in. Two people said Tampa. Seven people said Fort Lauderdale. Nine people said Miami, as Will Smith would celebrate. That is the correct answer, Miami. All right, that is it. It's 8 o'clock on the dot, and that is the last question. So before we go over the final standings, let me just say one last time, from both myself and Taco, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for, I hope, having as much fun as I've had hosting while you were playing. 
and supporting an incredible organization like DuPage Pads. The link is still in the description of this video and that link's not going anywhere in the future. If you'd like to donate in the future, you can check it out on their website. Again, if you're with ComEd um, or Exelon tonight, if you donate $25 or more, the company will match that. Um, so thank you all for being here. Thank you, Ed, for setting this up. Carrie for setting this up. Chad for being here. Uh, and DuPage Pads overall for just doing such an incredible thing for all of the people that you help and affect, uh, you know, obviously prior to COVID and since this crazy situation that we're in. Um, with all of that said, we are going to go over the final standings. If you finished in first place, you've won yourself a $50 gift card to Alter Brewing in Downers Grove, Illinois. Um, if you are in first place, I should have your email address. I will forward that along to the organizers and they will contact you to get you that gift card. And... <laughs> Uh, that is it. Here we go. Final standings. In first place, 306, 232. Just a couple points over second. The Angelica's Artie and Winnie. Puppies cuddling in third place. Uh, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Chad, thank you. Middleton Lens, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jess, thank you for being here. John, everybody. Lindsay, Chris, thank you for the support. Thank you for uh, helping out such an incredible organization. We will contact you if you're in first place to get you set up with that gift card. For everybody else, have a great night. Be safe. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Play some trivia with us. Check it out on facebook.com slash tricks. We have trivia coming up all sorts of times in the future. Until then, be safe, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.